Happy birthday, Mr. President, uh, from all of us here on Beyond 100 Days. Let's begin with our first conversation on the show this evening. It's about discrimination against persons living with disabilities. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria says it shut down Kentucky Fried Chicken, that's KFC, and international fast food restaurant chain at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport here in Lagos over discrimination against a passenger. Uh, recall that on the 27th of this month, Debola Daniel, son of former governor of Ogun State, Benga Daniel, had posted on his official X page about his experience at KFC, um, that's the Murtala Mohammed International Airport branch. According to Daniel, the restaurant had um, stopped him and his family from entering, uh, stating that no wheelchairs were allowed. Uh, this post has sparked conversations on the issues of widespread discrimination against persons living with uh, disabilities in Nigeria and what stakeholders must do differently to better the quality of life of more than 27 million Nigerians with some form of disability. You can join the conversation right now on X using the hashtag Beyond 100 Days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG and at Nifemi Ogunthoye. Joining me now is the GM, Lagos State Office for Disability Affairs, Lasoda, at Dene Care Oye Tunde Lawal. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this evening. You were at the airport on the day this news broke along with the commissioner and other Lasoda officials. Um, what were your findings? Good evening and thank you very much for having me, Mr. Obuntohi. Happy Easter to you as well as your viewers. So as soon as I got the notification um, personally and alerted my agency, we immediately went away to the airport with my Honorable Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Mr. Mobola Jehulinde. And we were received at the airport by the RGM, having been instructed by the MD of FAN. Um, upon receiving us, we were told that they had done their investigation and they welcomed us into their customer service area. Afterwards, we insisted and um, without refusing us, we actually made our way to KFC. We spoke to the manager um, at the branch and then we actually had to speak with a few other employees there. Unfortunately for us, the young lady I'm concerned had closed for the day because she was on the morning duty. And we found out a number of things. The manager insisted that the um, brand does not have a discrimination policy against persons with disability and claimed that the employee was overzealous, as the case is. At that point, um, the RGM had mandated that several things be done, and um, that would determine the next course of action. Almost immediately, the Lagos State Consumer Protection Agency was also put in notice, as well as the National Disability Commission. Mm -hmm. Every single person was on point, you know, alerted as the case is. And um, we read out the law to them, the Special People's Law of Lagos State, establishing the agency that I now run, mm -hmm. which has a few functions, which I'm mm -hmm. touching on later on in our conversation. And that's exactly how swiftly we responded. And in almost um, an under four hour, eight hour window mm -hmm. afterwards, fans shut down that branch of Kentucky Fried Chicken Indeed. because of the mm. and evidence against Mr. Daniel. You know, everyone is talking about the swift response, and I've had many people ask if uh, this response would have been so swift with similar complaints from every other person with disability. Uh, what do you think? I believe very strongly that that is sort of impracticable, that is very unrealistic, and that is sincerely unfair to my administration. I assumed office as a general manager of the agency, and unfortunately, because of the nature of the subject matters we have dealt with, for every matter that has come to us, um, we have dealt as importantly as possible because the Themes Plus agenda of my principal, um, Governor Babaji Dulishola Songulu, means social inclusion, gender equality, and youth empowerment. We are not leaving anyone behind. So you can, um, sadly, I cannot disclose the names and the matters that we have dealt with because some of them are still ongoing. And but you can be, you know, sure that we have treated every single case because outside of the fact that uh, we do not want to leave anyone behind, we also have factored in race, gender, and in this instance, family pedigree. It is not Mr. Daniel's fault that he was born into um, the family of Daniel, and uh, mm. he must be a humane treatment that anyone who has been brazenly discriminated against must get and that is exactly what it is my agency has done 
So we're hearing that FAN has instructed KFC management to issue a written apology. We saw a form of apology on X um, to the affected person. And they've also said that the management should display a policy statement of non-discrimination at the entrance of their uh, the facility before resuming operations. So w will these suffice? It would all suffice, but you and I know for a certainty that one of the things that we're going to do, which I can also share on air, is there's a lot of looking into the books. And I must also thank the Public Affairs Unit of FAN and um, the entire department, because what we're now doing is to get our hands into what goes on when the trainings are happening at KFC. Because it's very easy for brands of um, big nature to throw employees under the bus and claim that where infrastructural provisions are being made that they are disability compliant. But in actuality, as with this case, sadly, the apology was posted online. To the best of my knowledge, I do not think the apology has been sent specifically and directly to Mr. Daniel, who was um, abused. None has been sent to the management of the airport. And I do not believe up until my coming on air, we have gotten any apology notification of sort in my agency. Mm. So you talked about the legal state law uh, for people with special needs earlier. A section of that law actually stipulates that public buildings should not be constructed without the necessary accessibility aids, you know, such as lifts and what have you. By the way, many of those airports, um, their lifts have not been working for many years now. You can also add to it even some government-owned infrastructure like overhead bridges that are not built to suit people who use um, wheelchairs and what have you. Uh, we haven't seen much enforcement in this regard. What do you think is the next step, to, you know, from perhaps an agency like yours or the state government? So one of the reasons I'm on your show this evening is the first we pop um, the humanity in every single person. Because without a doubt, what it is that is left for every single one of us to do is to delve into how humane we can be and then collaborate. Conversations of this nature also pushes out the narrative about how important it is for every single person to consider differences when it comes to disabilities. The deaf, the blind, the deaf and the blind, persons with albinism, persons that have spinal cord concerns, persons with spinal bifida, the elderly, pregnant women, these are just a few of the categories that my agency ensures that we protect their interest. And we cannot do it on our own. There are people, individuals who have taken it upon themselves to put out awareness materials out there. A young man just did a movie on YouTube called um, 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 Kaseko on YouTube, and he was talking and addressing the concerns around people with albinism. Mm -hmm. Reality is that. We are currently working on amending the law as is, the Special People's Law of Lagos 2015. And until that is completely done, we have started consultation, we have gotten the inputs from the stakeholders across the clusters, and very soon we'll open it up to the general public so we can get as much into the amendment as possible. Then the machinery of enforcement will go out. And I'm coming because this is one of the reasons that this story is very personal to me, because I'm also a person with disability myself, mm. right knee, above knee, and putting as I'm going. Mm. It is high time one of us pay attention to the concerns of persons with disability in Lagos State and in Nigeria as a whole. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I saw a podcast where you shared your story. I think it's very inspiring. And I think that it is now your time to do your beat in this regard, seeing what you've gone through yourself. But I'm concerned about enforcement. I will likely go into see visits to, you know, uh, business owners, you know, even religious organizations that have, you know, public facilities to perhaps um, talk to them about the need to uh, comply with this with this law. The first agent of socialization, as we know, is a family unit, and afterwards moves to religion. One of the biggest tools that we can do and you know um, use is what we're doing, one-on-one -on -one advocacy and one -on -one awareness. We would very soon start to take the awareness into the grassroots and then take it into the um, what you might call it the religious institution as well as educational institutions because the reality is about it is that if for instance you have a child who is five year old and come back to home and tells you that they have an autistic child in their classroom almost immediately you are made aware of what it means to have a classmate who's living with autism and that way you yourself become an informal advocator for persons with um, disability more specifically autism so we're going out we are coming around um, banking institutions, religious societies. You must also agree with me that a lot of these structures cannot 
be renovated, unfortunately. Mm. A lot of mm. these structures. So there will be room for us to actually advocate into providing, you know, branches here and there, um, pro providing services where people are allowed, even when they cannot get access into some of these facilities, because oh, yeah. the conversation as we want enforcement, realism is also very key. And that is why going forward, all the legal state um, agencies are actually on board, particularly with building Indeed. so that we are mm. um, faced with now. Absolutely. I believe we have some more time in the future to talk more about um, what Lasoda is doing and how you also intend to engage um, other stakeholders. General Manager, Lagos State Office for Disability Affairs, Adenike Oye Tunde Lawao. Thank you so much for talking to us.